Welcome back kids. Today is episode 3 of designing a sign in VCar Pro. Uh, this video will mainly be about uh, text, how to manipulate your text. Uh, several little different tips and tricks that you may or may not already know about, uh, but uh, they were very helpful. Uh, we're going to cover tabs, converting text to curves, and then how to move or manipulate your text after you do that, and plus other things too. So uh, this will be the first of a two-part series for this sign here behind me, this 48-inch round sign. Uh, this is going to be a repurposing project. It's going to have raised letters like this. I've already got these cut out, and this is one of the things you'll get to see me do today in this video. I'll cut those out, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll get into the sanding and painting in this one or not just depends on how long it goes but uh anyway y'all sit back relax and enjoy the show and let me show you how i do this all right we're in vcar pro this is my 48 inch round piece of plywood that i have to work with and in here this i've created my job box job setup and this is going to say Sullivan, and then down below here it'll say Established 2024. But for now, we're just going to focus on the Sullivan. This uh, piece of half-inch MDF is 43 inches long, 8 inches tall, 0.5 thickness. I'm zeroing off the material surface using the uh, bottom left corner for my XY. And... I'm going to click OK. All right, now, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is put some text in here. So I've already picked my font, and the client has approved that. So let's just type in Sullivan here, and it'll be all caps. All right. Now, our text height is going to be 7 inches. Let me close that. So as you can see, this is not really fitting where we need it, but also as you can see, there's terrible spacing uh, between these letters. Some are too close, some are too far apart, like that. So we're going to work on that. So the first thing we need to do is just correct the spacing on these. So let's just leave that left click highlighted. We'll go over here to the text spacing tool. And this is such a handy thing to know how to use. Basically, let's just pick this right here. Your I, the I and the V here. You can see they're actually almost touching up there. Well, that's not going to make for a good car. But we're cutting these letters out. So to separate these two, put some space in between them. Just put your cursor somewhere in the middle here between those two letters. Hit your shift key and hold it down. And you can see how that changed the two little arrows point started pointing outside. That's letting you know it's fixing to increase the space in between them. If you release the shift key, the two arrows are pointing in. That means it would bring them closer. So we want them further apart. So I got the shift key pushed and then just left click. And it puts a little space in between those. So I'm going to go two clicks on there for now. Let's go over here and look at this one. This one really needs some work. We need to bring these together. So, just click until we get it where we think it looks all right. I think that's, I think that's a little bit too much. So now I'm going to bring it back out one click. Now down here, this looks like a lot of space, but actually we're almost touching down here. So they're too close. Put a click between those. Move on over here. That still has too much space in there for me. Alright. Over here, we need a little clip right there between the L and the I. The two L's. That looks pretty good. The S and the U, there's a lot of, there's too much distance between those. Alright, we don't want to get them too close. All 
All right, so here's where we are. We still are not fitting within our 43 inches that I have deemed to be uh, correct. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hop. Uh -oh. Oh, let me change that. <laughs> I forgot to get out of my text tool. All right, now we're back to, I'm just back on the pointer. Highlight them. Now I'm just going to resize them. I'm going to keep them seven inches. I just want to bring, make the whole thing shorter. So to do that, I'm just going to go over here, do the set selected object size. All right, right now, that's 50 inches. So we got to bring this in quite a bit. The height is showing a 7.35. I don't understand. I don't know why, but let's just change that right back to 7. Apply. All right, now that's the that notch is down to 48. So we're getting there. <clears throat> now, all right, so we're going to unlink these, the X and the Y. That way I can manipulate the width of this without affecting the height. So I'm just going to go over here and grab this little center dot. We're going to drag this in. This would be one way of doing it. And then you could just bring it over here and center it up within our area that we have to work with. Or the simpler way to do that, since we know we got 43 inches there, and let's say I want to use 42 of that, because i got to use, <clears throat> leave a little space on the ends for the clamping. So let's just go ahead and set this at 42. And apply it. Now, that that looks good. That should be the perfect uh, spacing between each end. Yeah, and let me show you what would have happened if we had a left that length. Huh? If I left that linked and let's say like right now it's 30 what size is that let's just drag it back out <clears throat> well right now it's 45 7. if i left that linked and say i wanted to make it 42 well see it's going to change the height down here because whatever i do up here affects what i do down here and you know, that'll drive you nuts trying to keep that straight. So the best thing to do, let me click Control Z, just undid what we just did. So if I want this to be 42 inches by 7, the best thing to do is unlink it. Set this to 42 and apply. That's going to give me uh, the right size for my letters, and they're going to fit within this 48-inch circle perfectly. So we've got that pretty well set up. So let's work on our uh, tool pass. Well, all of this will be cut as uh, profile cut. So let's do this. Here's profile cut. My, uh, the cut depth is going to be 0.51. The actual thickness of the material is 0.5. So that'll allow me to cut all the way through. I'm going to use a eighth inch down cut slim gin. I don't have a up cut eighth inch end mill. And I didn't really realize that uh, until I started on this project because I really need an eighth inch up cut for this. And I'll show you why later in the video why I would want to use a up cut if I had it. And I will be getting one soon. Cody at Cadence Manufacturing, maker of the Jenny bits, you need to get me a eighth inch upcut bit. <laughs> oh me, I can't believe we don't have that yet. But there are others out there that already have it, and I will have to get one of those. All right, so we're doing cutting 0.51 depth, eighth inch slim gin. We're going to do it in four passes. We're cutting to the outside right of the letters because we're just cutting them out. We want to keep them the right size. We're going to need two uh, tabs. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, the tabs. We're going to do our tab tool, edit tabs. So let's just highlight here. I mean, get bigger here. 
I could put one up here, but that's kind of thin, so I really don't want to be sanding real hard on that. So I'm going to put it here, unable to add tabs. Oh, I forgot about that. To add tabs to text, the text must be converted to curve. Once converted, the text will no longer be editable as text. Do you want to convert all selected text to curve? Yes, I do. Okay, I want to elaborate a little bit on that uh, converting text to curves and no longer being able to edit it as text. And what that means is once you convert it to curves, the software no longer recognizes the text as text. Then they just become individual vectors. So uh, like once you convert them to curves, let's say you decided you want to change the font. Well, if you had just normal text up there you could highlight it and go up there <clears throat> to your text box and uh, change that easily but once you convert to curves you can't do that you would have to delete what you have there and then just create a new text box and put your text in there so that's what that means all right let's get back to it to add tabs to text, the text must be converted to curve. Once converted, the text will no longer be editable as text. Do you want to convert all selected text to curve? Yes, I do. All right, now, let's get busy. Putting a tab here. I put a tab here. Keeping it on the thicker part, you know, when I can. Now, these, these flat areas are perfect, so... All along these letters, I think all of them are going to have the flat top on them. That's uh, the obvious place to put it. And then down here, I'll put one right here on this thicker part of the U. Put one right here. And then, yeah, and then I'll put one right there. So let's scoot over and do that again. We'll just repeat that here. Flat part. And on the bottom and over here and this I will just do top and bottom in the middle of the flat area V middle of the flats that's real small down there I'm gonna put it right here on the side so it'll be easier to sand same thing here put it on the fat side right there and then on the bottom each flat area now let's see on the end here and here those are the no-brainers and this one then I'm gonna put one <sighs> I'd rather it be on the fat side here but this will be okay if I do it over here I don't want to put it on the point because that's you know that delicate sanding I can put it over here on the side and it'll be okay. So we'll go with that right there. So there's all of our tabs. Except for this. Hmm. The middle of the A. I've got to take that into consideration. I'm... Ooh, that's hard to say too. I'm going to take my chances and not try to tab that. Just see what. Okay, let me explain why I was kind of having a hard time deciding what to do there. The risk of not putting a tab there on the inside of that A or any interior shape like that is when you cut your profile around that particular part of the shape, if it just drops out, but, you know, if it just drops straight down, you're in good shape. But there's always that possibility that as soon as it cuts loose, this router bit could, you know, it's spinning and it could turn that piece just a little bit and then it'll catch. And then you don't know what the hell it's going to do. It could, uh, it, it could potentially break the letter there. You know, it could potentially break a bit, you know, but, since this is MDF, I'm not real worried about it breaking a bit, you know, half inch MDF. But if let's just say if that was walnut or maple or something, I would have tabbed that. But my hesitancy, and the real only reason I had to even think about it is because once you tab that, 
that's not easy to sand out on the inside like that, especially, you know, depending on the size of your uh, letter there. So I just took a chance and, you know, said I'm going to go for it, and it worked out okay. But uh, it is a risk anytime you do that. All right, let's get back to it again. I'm going to take my chances and not try to tab that. Just see what happens. So, back out here. Close out my tab tool. Scroll on down. And we're just going to call this text. No, we'll call it subtle. But there's going to be another line of text below this that's going to say establish 2024. For now, we're only focused on the Sullivan part. So let's calculate this. Just let me know it's going to cut through because I have my cutting depth set to 0.51. And it's only 0.5 thick. That's what I want to do. So I click OK. Reset. Preview all. All right. And there they are. You can see our tabs there. They're all visible there in the preview so let me look at all of them just make sure everything looks good and the spacing is looking okay that's good still got a little gap between those in here yeah so that's what i'm looking for is making sure i maintain some gap between them yeah i'm gonna go with that i feel like it'll be okay all right, so we've got that done. Let's save these. And we're, we only have one tool pass, so this is pretty simple. So I'm going to save it. And we're going to call this G-Code Sullivan Text. Just so I'll know for sure what that is. Save that. All right, now I've got to open up the Masso link so we can send that over there. Get this folder open up. Let's find this text right there, Sullivan text. That's the one we just did. Drag and drop. Maybe. Yep, there it is. And send file. All right, let's go over to the Masso and see what we need to do over there. All right, go to our F6 tab, load file. Look right there, Sullivan Text. There's the one we just sent over. We're going to load it. And there we go. I've already got my piece of MDF secured over here, but I do have to reestablish my XY because I had to remove my fence because that uh, piece of MDF was too long to fit otherwise. So we are going to reestablish X, Y, and Z. So I'll be right back. All right, just going to jog my spindle over here. All right, that's real close right there. my camera yeah I'm gonna go with that right there that's perfect so what I do is come back up here and check out my X and Y now we got to do the Z and I'll do that with the probe all right let's probe right there All right, got our Z set. Move over here out of the way. All right, let's do this. F2. Go to origin. Rewind, rewind. Cycle start. Well, it would help if I turned on the spindle first. <laughs> Let me back up and punt. Hold on. All right. I rehomed and did all that jazz. I also had to remove this clamp that was right here. 
because when it went to, after I homed it, went over to measure the bit, this caught on my clamp. Anyway, let's go. F2. Go to origin. I'm there. Rewind, rewind. Cycle start. I want you to notice how well that dust, dust boot is grabbing all that MDF dust. And that's with the front off of the dust boot. You can imagine how much better it'd be with the front on there. Okay, while I have a, a long stretch here without any audio, I want to thank y'all for watching, and if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, give me a like. Like right now, just go down there and punch that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, this would be a great chance to do that now. I'd also like to thank three new members of the uh, channel. My first three members, and this has happened over the past uh, couple weeks. We've got George S., Box Boys Audio Sound Solutions and Mike Green. Thank you guys so much. Y'all are the first, and the actual first was George S. So, George, thank you for breaking the ice there. I appreciate that. Uh, if y'all are interested in maybe uh, becoming a member of this channel, all you have to do is click that join button down below this uh, video. And that is so appreciated. There's three levels. You can be a woodworker for $2.99 a month or a journeyman for $5.99 a month. Or you can be an elite for $24.99 a month. And I appreciate your consideration. And uh, thanks again to those three guys that have already took that step. All right. We're back in VCAR Pro. This will be the established 2024, the letters for that. This is another half-inch sheet of MDF. 16 inches long, 8 inches high. Uh, still going to zero off the bottom left, off the material surface. Click OK on that, and it's just warning me I'm going to cut through. That's fine. That's what I want to do. All right, so there's our circle, which really is irrelevant at this point, but we're going to leave it there. This time for the text, instead of just using the text, the draw text, tool I'm going to use the draw text within a vector box and let me click on that okay the what's different about that is this will automatically resize the text to fit within the work area which is 8 16 by 8 so let's just see how that works uh, I'm there's my bounding box dimension 16 by 8. I'm using the same font. So let's go right here. It's going to be established. Now notice how it shrinks it as I add text to it, it gets to fit within the boundary of that 16 by 8 bounding box. So we've got that there, and that looks good. Uh, so let's close that. Now let's look and see what size our text actually is. So it's showing at 2.3706 height. I want it to be 3 inch height. So I'm just going to change that. Notice I still have my link XY is unchecked. So I'm just going to do 3 inches. So that's going to make it taller. And it can be a little wider too. We got 16 inches. So let's just make it 14 inches wide. Save us a little room for clamping our screws. So Click that. Now stretch it out. Close that. Now I think I would like to. Let's see. Let's make that bold. Since these are smaller letters, anything that's thin is going to be really thin, like that line there on that four. So let's bold that. Give it a little bit uh, more thickness. So just close. Check one more time on our size so we're 
three inches tall, just over 14 inches wide. That is perfect. So let's close that. We'll go over here and set up our tool path, which again will be profile, same depth, 0.51, same tool, the eighth inch uh, down cut slim jim, four passes outside, and we do need to add tabs. So let's do that. Click the edit tabs, and we'll go in here real quick and do that. So there, uh -oh. there again, we got to convert it to curve, so I'm just going to say yes. There's a tab. There's one, and I'll put one right there. I could put one here, but I don't think it's good. Yeah, I'll do it anyway. All right, then I'm going to put one here at the top of the S. And one over here a little bit. In fact, I think I'm going to move this one. Let's just, all you got to do is grab it, left click on it, and you can slide it anywhere you want it. So we just reposition that. All right, on the T, that's an odd shaped critter. I got to keep sanding in mind. I, uh, so I won't definitely want to be sanding on the outside of a curve, not on the inside. So let's just put it right there. And we'll stick one out here on the end of the crossbar there. Well, actually, that didn't go on the end. That went on that corner, and I don't want that. So, again, I'm just left-click and grabbing it, dragging it down to where I want it. Want it right in the middle or real close to it, just like that. And we got our dot here. We'll just go top and bottom on that. Top of the two. I'm going to go that right there. That will hold that in place. And then on the zero, I'm going to go off to a little bit to the side here. So we're outside the curb, but still on the uh, thicker area. This two will be the same, top and bottom, right in the center. And then on the four, bottom is the no-brainer. We'll put one right here. And I think I'll stick one right out here, too. So it'll be held in place uh, in three places. So we're going to close out the tabs. Back it out here a little bit so we can see what we got. All right, that all looks good. So we're back over here. We did our tabs. Scrolling down. Now we're just going to call this what it is. Established 2024. And calculate. Yes, I want to cut through. Let's reset and preview. And there we go. Mm, the, I don't really care for that spacing right there. We may need to go back and look at that. Here they're kind of touching two. Between the two and the four. Yeah, let's go back in there and put a little space between these letters. So we're just going to, ah, uh, we can't do that now that we've converted it to curves. So what I can do is just click, click each letter individually. I'm just going to go over one, two, go over one, and yeah, we'll move the dot over one. And this is where we were too close here between that two and the four. So let's just move this over one. I like that whole thing. Over one and then over one. And I'm just using my arrow keys to reposition those. All right. So now let's try that again. Highlight all of them. Close that. We'll open this tool path back up. There's our tabs. So we just need to recalculate this, basically. Yes, I want to cut through. Reset. Preview. See if we did any good. Yep, we got space between that two and the four. We're still uh, connecting there on the T and the dot, but I think that's going to be okay. Real thin between here, but that's that's okay, too. All right. I'm happy with that one. So, go back here. Close that. Let's see what our time's going to be on this one. 
4 minutes 46 seconds, give or take 30 seconds. Close that. Save it. We're going to save toolpath. And there's only one. We're calling it established 2024. That's correct. Save one. All right. Let's open up our Masso link. Let's open up our folder. There is the file we just created. I can look down here and confirm that it's 153 and that was created at 152. So we know that's right. Grab it, left click, drag it over here, drop. And there it is. You can confirm it by looking right there. That's the name in the file. All right. Let's go to the Masso and get that one loaded up. All right. Let's load up this new file. F6, load file, look at my folder, establish 2024, right there it is, load. All right. Now all I got to do is check my XY. Since I don't have a fence there, I think I'm a little bit this way from where I was on the previous one. So I'm going to check that right quick, and we'll get to cutting. All right, I had to remove that screw so I can do this. So, let's get it has really been a while since I have set my X and Y using the probe block. I mean, it's been a while. Because I don't have to anymore. With the G55, that eliminates all this. So now I'm doing it caveman style. That's what she All said. Right. <laughs> All right, probe. Here. All right, now, we'll do the Z since we're sitting here anyway. All right. We're going to call that done. So, F2. Go to work origin, which is right there. Rewind, rewind. Cycle start. If y'all have any questions or comments, be sure and post them below. I always reply. And if you feel so inclined, there's where the thanks button is. Uh, if you want to help me out a little bit for producing these videos for you, especially if you're learning something from them. I've been doing quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one FaceTime uh, chats with uh, some of y'all uh, help you know uh, with any problems you may have and uh, i love doing those i love getting to know y'all uh it's it's a lot of fun but it also is getting to where it's starting to take up a lot of my time too so what i may do going forward is uh make the one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting or tutorial part of one of the membership levels so if y'all have any thoughts on that let me know i'd love to hear it I had mentioned earlier 
in the video that I was going to explain why I would have rather used an upcut bit instead of a downcut bit to cut out these letters. And you're seeing why right there. That sawdust is just packed in there. Whereas an upcut bit would have been pulling those that dust out so the uh, dust extractor could have, you know, got all of it. So that's the reason. Since I got the garage door open, he's going to try to blow it out. Well, that probably wasn't the best idea I've had all day. Y'all, I ain't never been this tired and lived over it. True story. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. Uh, a lot of those pro tip uh, text tips that I put in this one, uh, not everybody knows those, especially if you're just getting started out. And uh, those tips can save you a lot of headache and frustration going forward. And let's face it, if you're going to be making signs, you got to know how to handle the text. So I'm hoping uh, I'm getting you there as far as the uh, working with the text. Thank you. And since I finally started getting some uh, channel members, I need to work on my tiers. You know, you got three different levels. There should be perks with each one of those levels. I haven't figured all that out yet. You got suggestions? I'd love to hear them. Uh, also, on the one on one uh, tutoring or training, uh, that's something that I am going to do. I just got to work out all those details because uh, I want this channel to benefit you as much as it benefits me. So uh, going forward, I'm thinking along those lines. Uh, here's our uh, current subscriber count. So, man, that's awesome. Thank you, fellas and ladies and cavemen and cave girls. <laughs> We'll finish this uh, this sign up on the next video. Until then, y'all take care. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> and uh, y'all let me know what you think about uh, the one-on-one. Y'all let me know what you think about the one-on-one -on -one, uh, session. What the hell is that called? I'm also uh, working on creating my